Here are some pictures of me around mid-2020. Yes, I was holding a fish. And here are some pictures of me early 2021. So in this picture of me here, I'd probably estimate my body fat to be around 17 to 18%. And this picture of me here, I'd probably estimate around 12% body fat, but it's not entirely accurate. But for sure, I've definitely lost a lot of body fat. Looking back and wondering how I got from the first picture to the second, some of the things I did were actually Pretty crazy. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking you through exactly what I did over the past six months to get to where I am now. Massive horn going off outside, I'm trying to film here. But yeah, you're gonna to wanna to stick around. So let's take it back to where it all started. Oh shit, I've gone too far. So, after the end of the first lockdown, I finally decided to join the gym. So I'd always kind of been into fitness and sports and I'd played rugby for like the past five years. But I hadn't actually worked out or been in the gym for years. Also, my diet was terrible. When I first joined the gym, I was going about five times a week and I was doing like chest and triceps, back and biceps, legs, a full day of arms. And yeah, I kind of thought I knew what I was doing, but looking back, I actually didn't really know that much. This would be a daily thing for me. I'd be in the shop, I'd have at least one Mountain Dew a day, crisps, chocolates, biscuits. I mean, I really just didn't care what I ate. And I'd be doing this literally every day. There's 148 grams of sugar here. And in just four items and one drink, there's 1,270 calories. And that was just a snack, really. So this was like the first kind of thing that I started to change with my diet. Initially, I cut out sugars, fats, stopped eating white bread, stopped eating cheese, and all these crazy things that I thought I needed to change. So I remember everything I was eating, I was looking at the packet to see if it had a high sugar content or a high fat content. And if it did, I probably wouldn't eat it. And I mean, looking back now, it's like, what was I doing? Although it isn't good to have a diet with really high sugar or high saturated fat. By cutting these out, this wasn't the thing that made me lose fat. Do you want to know the real secret? It was a calorie deficit. A calorie deficit, something we all hear so much about. But what is a calorie deficit and what does it do? Let's see what we can find. According to Wikipedia, a caloric deficit is any shortage in the amount of calories consumed relative to the amount of calories required for maintenance of current body weight. What? So what does that mean? I'm going to try and break this down as simply as I can. So imagine you earn £2,000 a day. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Okay, so if you earn £2,000 a day, that's your daily wage. And if you're somehow spending £2,500 or £3,000 a day, you're going to simply end up in debt. And this is exactly the same with your calories. So your daily wage of 2,000 pounds is your calorie maintenance level. This is basically the number of calories you need to consume per day to maintain your weight. And if you're constantly eating 2,500 or 3,000 calories a day, you're gonna put weight on. Now, if you're eating 1,800 or 1,700, you're gonna start losing weight. But don't mistake weight with fat. Weight is the number on the scales, whereas fat is an overall body percentage of the amount of fat your body holds and so many people say I want to lose weight I want to lose stone I want to lose two stone whereas in fact it's not the weight you want to lose it's the fat so it's important to note that when I did change my diet I was also playing rugby about five times a week so this helped me achieve my calorie deficit Okay, so enough about a calorie deficit. I'll save that for another video. Let's talk about how over time I continue to build muscle while still losing fat. So my knowledge of training and how I trained actually really developed over this time. Like I said, initially I was doing chest and triceps, back and biceps, even a full day of arms. Oh, that's so unnecessary. And I kind of wasn't following any program or structure. I was just going into the gym and doing what I felt like. So over time I realized I need to be kind of following a structured plan and how I'm progressing throughout. So I started looking into training splits and just before the gyms closed, I was doing a full training program that was more focused towards rugby and performance. Oh no, 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 no. However, the majority of the time I followed a push-pull leg split, which is just one day push, one day pull, one day legs, rest and repeat. But again, that's a whole separate video. Yo, bro, what's your exact training plan and diet? What, you want my exact training plan and exact diet? What do you want that for? What do you mean, what do I want that for? Because I want the same results as you. First of all, you can't get the same results as me because you're not me. You're a different person, you're you. Oh, so what do I need to do then? How your body reacts to training and diet is completely different to how my body does. You don't need my exact training plan, you need to make your own. 
<laughs> well, that was weird. This is one of my dad's wigs because he's really insecure because he's bald. Now, but what I'm trying to say is there's not one training plan or diet that's going to work for everyone. Everyone is different and they're going to need a different training plan and different diet to maximize their potential. So it's pointless me giving you my exact training plan because it might not work for you or my diet you might not like. So what I am going to do is give you some of my top tips that are crucial in any training plan. My first tip for any training plan is to always implement some form of progressive overload. According to Wikipedia, progressive overload is a method of strength training that advocates for the gradual increase of stress placed upon the musculoskeletal and nervous system. Oh, Jesus Christ. This basically means that over time you should increase the difficulty of your training. The body is always adapting and if you're placing your body under some form of stress, it's going to adapt. So you've got to ensure you're giving your body that stimulus in order to grow. This could be in the form of increasing the weight. So if in one session you do 100 kg squats for three sets of eight, next week you do 105 kg. This can also be in the form of increasing reps. You can also decrease rest time, you can increase the frequency of your exercise or you can increase the intensity. My next tip is about consistency. Consistency is key. If you're looking for the quickest and easiest way to build muscle, just do a few workouts, go to sleep, and then... If you smell, what the rock? <laughs> well, if it was that easy, I think we'd all wake up as the rock. Now, but building muscle takes time. Some can build muscle faster than others, just as well as some can burn fat quicker than others, and that's mainly down to genetics. But anything worth working for takes a lot of hard work, time, and consistency. And that leads me on to my next tip. My next tip is to set yourself some realistic goals. And what I mean by this is set yourself something that you believe you can achieve. I mean, be optimistic about the goal and really strive for greatness, but make sure the goal is realistic. You see all these fitness influencers and models on Instagram nowadays that look absolutely insane, but what you've got to understand and realize is that's their full-time job. That's literally what they get paid to do. And more often than not, these people have been training for the best part of 10 plus years. So what I mean by this is don't try and compare yourself to other people, just try and be a better version of yourself. I think I saw Rob Lipsit say, this and I absolutely loved it and he said don't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 10 and I think that speaks a really powerful message on to my final tip and this is arguably the most important tip to remember but before we get into the final tip make sure you've hit that like button and press subscribe yes the screen is still black so go and do it now so the final tip is to make sure you're having fun. If you're not having fun and you're not enjoying it, you're never gonna sustain it. So if you don't like running, try swimming. And if you don't like broccoli or avocado, try something different. This is one of the main things to remember, to have fun. If exercise and diet is a chore, you're never gonna sustain it. You've gotta have something that's yours, you can manage, and that you enjoy. If you haven't already, go and follow me on Instagram where I'm posting tons of workouts and much more. So I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this has helped some of you guys. So once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.